There are three recurring mistakes that I keep seeing wedding filmmakers make over and over when they're editing their videos. So if you are a wedding filmmaker and you are wanting to improve the quality of your edits, in this video I want to share with you these three editing mistakes you may be making, as well as how to fix them, so you can be a better wedding filmmaker. Getting right into it then, the first mistake that I see many wedding filmmakers make in their edits is that they are focusing too much on the details of the wedding day instead of the people that the wedding is about. If you're wondering about my qualifications here, I have been filming weddings for coming up on almost 15 years now, and every month I host a wedding film review live stream where I watch and review wedding films from filmmakers around the world. And one consistent mistake that I've seen many filmmakers making in their edits is that they spend way too much time establishing the location and showing details of the day at the start of the wedding video. On average, many of the wedding films that I've watched start off with something like a drone shot, then they show sunlight filtering through trees, an arbor that has been decorated with flowers, empty chairs, the couple's wedding bands, and then finally, after approximately 40 seconds on average, they finally show a person in the edit. Weddings are about people, right? I think we can both agree on that. So why are you as an editor taking so long to show a person in the wedding film? And I get it. I've heard all of the rebuttals to this argument before. The couple paid money for all of these details, and if they paid money for it, it's going to be filmed. These details show all of the meticulous work that the bride went into when planning her day. Matt, I just got a drone, and I really feel like the film needed five aerial shots of the venue to start it off. I get it. I've told you, I've heard all of these arguments before, but the fact remains that you have been hired to film two people getting married. And if you want to create an engaging film that people actually want to watch, I'm not saying to not include all these important details because I'm sure the couple will appreciate that you have included them. What I am saying is that you do not need to load the first 40 seconds of the wedding film in some misguided attempt to make sure that you are quote unquote establishing the wedding day, when in reality, a lot of those shots get incredibly boring very quickly, which means that people are not going to want to watch all of them and they're going to want to click away and watch something else. In short, if you want to edit a wedding film that people actually want to watch, you have to make it interesting. And those detail shots are not nearly as engaging as shots of people. So how should you handle editing the beginning of your wedding film then? How do you make it engaging? By all means, you can still show establishing shots, but I would only recommend showing enough to establish where you are, as the naming implies, and then get right into beginning the story and showing people, and above all, keeping things moving in your edit. That of course leads us very nicely into the second editing mistake that many wedding filmmakers are making, and this second issue is poor pacing in their film edit. What do I mean by poor pacing? Well, I do not mean by filming everything in slow motion, which is actually another issue, to be clear, we can make a whole other video about that, but uh, no. The editing mistake of poor pacing refers to wedding filmmakers getting bogged down, showing too many moments from one part of the wedding day in their edit before finally moving on to the next. The perfect example of this would be the wedding ceremony, because showing the wedding ceremony in a wedding video is sadly where most wedding video edits go to die. <laughs> Here's the deal, and I've been plenty guilty of doing this in the past as well. It's very easy when you're editing a wedding video to feel the need to include all of the couple's vows in the edit. Just like how you may feel guilty if you do not include a lot of establishing shots because the couple spent a lot of money on the wedding day, many wedding filmmakers also feel guilty if they do not include all of the vows that the couple said during the ceremony, especially if the couple has written their own vows and they're really good. You almost hit a moment of paralysis when you're editing the ceremony because the vows may be three or four minutes long or longer and you cannot seem to bring yourself to cut out part of them, which leads to wedding film edits that I've watched that are eight, 10, 15 minutes long. And whenever I watch these films, I realize that half of the wedding video is just the vows, where the videographer is simply cutting between shots of the couple as they each say their vows and occasionally sprinkling in one or two two shots of B-roll because they do not have enough footage to cut away to during the vows. Like I said earlier, editing your wedding films this way is how you kill them because a good wedding film has good pacing. It will show many of the moments from the wedding day, but none of these moments are going to overstay their welcome. 
you will see the venue being established, but there's not going to be 40 seconds of establishing shots. The couple will get ready, the groom will put on his tuxedo, or the bride will put on her dress, and then you will get to the ceremony where they walk down the aisle, hear the message from the officiant, say their vows, exchange their rings, light a unity candle, or tie a unity knot, or pour unity sand, or plant a unity tree. I've seen it all. They'll do something, and then they will be pronounced married, and you will move on to editing the reception. Notice how the pacing of the edit keeps moving throughout. I don't say, hey, slow down and give me four minutes of the groom putting on his tie. No, you don't want the edit to get unnecessarily slowed down really at any moment. Now, I'm not going to give you a time limit on how long you should show each of these moments because I'm not going to edit your wedding films for you. I don't want to do that, and you don't want me to do that either. But what I can tell you objectively is that if you get caught up with one of these moments on the wedding day, like showing too much of the vows, and out of guilt, you include all of them because you were worried that the couple is going to be upset, this is going to ruin the pacing of your film. And suddenly, halfway through the edit, you've had your audience engaged, they're watching the video, they're learning the story of the couple, and then suddenly they find themselves losing interest in the edit of the wedding film because it's far too focused on one singular moment from the day when the edit really needs to move on. So above all, I do not want you to be afraid of not including something in the film because you're worried that the couple is going to be upset about it. By all means, if the couple asks you to include a lot of their vows, respect their wishes and include a lot of their vows. But if they've not asked you for this and you're just scared that they might be upset, that's not a good enough reason for you to slow down the pacing of your edit to include a ton of footage of a certain moment. Look, I don't ever want to see you editing out of guilt. The couple has hired you to be creative, so be creative in your edits and don't be afraid. Speaking of being creative, the final mistake that many wedding filmmakers are making when editing their films is that they're trying to include shots that are cool to watch, but not necessarily adding to the story that the film is telling. I have watched wedding films over the years where the wedding film is well edited, the story is progressing along nicely, and then all of a sudden, the film will randomly cut to a certain shot that feels out of place with the rest of the film. This shot will inevitably look very cool from a technical perspective because it's clearly a shot that was difficult for the wedding filmmaker to pull off and they put a lot of work into filming it to make it happen. But the issue is that this shot does not add to the story of the wedding film in any way and instead it's just in the film because it shows off what the filmmaker's capable of. It's almost like bragging to other filmmakers like, hey, yeah, you see that cool shot I got? Look what I did. Here are some examples to better explain what I mean by this, and the odds are that you may be guilty of some of these because pff, I know that I am. First, and most egregiously in my opinion, because I see so many wedding filmmakers do it, I'll find myself watching a normal looking wedding film, and then suddenly pff, the shot cuts to some sort of Rube Goldberg type machine that the videographer has constructed where there's either fire or water, or some sort of ramp system with a camera slider and a macro lens, and all these things are working together to suddenly reveal, dun dun dun, the couple's wedding rings. Look, I don't know why this happens, but we as videographers, we see the photographer putting the couple's wedding rings on a flat lay or someplace cool to take photos of them, and we say, oh my gosh. I need to do this too, but I need to take it to the next level by adding motion to everything and fire and water. Story for you, whenever I was filming my first few years of weddings, I was filming this fun wedding for a nice guy that I'm not going to name, but there came a point during the reception where I remember spending 20 minutes with him just getting a ring shot. The couple was dancing, we could have been filming great shots of them together, or we could have taken them out for a night portrait session and it would have looked so cool. But instead, I found myself at a table in the back of the reception hall with a large vase of water, remember it's always water, and the couple's wedding rings, and we were both repeatedly trying to drop both wedding rings into the vase while we were filming them with the intent of both of them floating gently down and landing next to one another at the bottom of the vase. I don't know if you've ever tried this before or have any understanding of how the laws of physics work, but this was essentially a game of random chance, which is why it took us 20 minutes to finally get this shot, which ended up being all of five seconds in the wedding video. This was sadly not the only time I did this either. Remember, we as wedding videographers always want either water or fire to be in our videos for some reason, and I have vivid memories of putting the couple's rings on a log in a fireplace 
don't worry, I will show you this footage right now where I put the rings on a log and film them with a fire in the background with my camera slider. And while it may have been okay to use this shot for a second or two, just know that I spent a long time setting up this shot when filming it. And then worse, I kept cutting back to the shot throughout the wedding film four times. I kid you not, probably 20 seconds of this wedding film was this one ring shot. And it was only a five minute film that I delivered the couple. That was a lot of the film was just that ring shot. This takes me back to my main point here and what I want you to keep in mind whenever you are editing your wedding films, because it really isn't about fancy ring shots or crazy drone shots or time lapses or anything like that. No, the question that I want you to keep in the back of your mind as you're editing your wedding film is, are you adding this shot to the film because it makes you look cool as a filmmaker? or because it actually enhances the story of the couple. Because in my opinion and in my experience, while including shots like these will look cool and make other wedding videographers go, oh wow, when they see them, if these shots are coming at the expense of telling a better story, either by taking you away from filming better moments that you missed because you're setting up these complicated shots, or by you randomly inserting these shots into the film whenever the story would be better served by showing other moments of the day, then shots like this are really not worth it and your time would be better spent chasing the story of the couple, their relationship and their friends and family all coming together for this big moment of them being married. So please, if you want to improve your wedding film editing, don't make these three mistakes and you are going to be amazed at how quickly your editing is going to improve because you're going to be focused on creatively telling the story of the couple on their wedding day. Speaking of improving your editing, what if I told you that you could hire an expert editor that already knows how to edit fantastic wedding films? An editor that can copy your style of editing and make their edits look like yours. And most importantly, what if they were able to not only edit very quickly, but they were also extremely affordable? Does this sound like a dream? It kind of sounds like a dream to me, but it isn't because I need to tell you about the sponsor of this video, my friends at Bride and Groom Video. I have personally been using Bride and Groom Video to help me edit all of my videos, including this one that you're watching right now, and I've been incredibly impressed by the speed and quality of their edits. They offer a very fast two week editing turnaround time where you can literally send them your raw footage using their simple to use submission website, tell them a bit about your film as well as what software you want to edit it in because yes, they can edit in Premiere Pro, Final Cut, or DaVinci Resolve, and then you will have a finished edit back in your inbox 14 days later. It's awesome. Keep in mind that most of your couples want their films back as soon as possible too, and now you can offer that to them. You can tell them that you'll be able to get their film edited faster and they're going to want to book you because of it. Plus, bride and groom video are budget friendly with a three minute highlight edit for only 415 bucks. So even if you are a new wedding filmmaker and you are not charging thousands upon thousands of dollars for your edits, they will still be able to work with you and help you create amazing wedding films. And because I want to help you save even more money, I've negotiated a special coupon code for you. It is MATT100. And whenever you use it, bride and groom video are going to give you $100 off your first purchase of $400 or more, making them even more affordable. So check out bride and groom video today at the link in the description and let them work with you to edit amazing wedding films that your couples will love while saving you time and money. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know down in the comments below if there are other mistakes that you see wedding filmmakers making. And also, I would love to know what other videos about wedding filmmaking you would love to see from me. Lastly, do you want to level up your wedding films and improve the quality of your work? I would love to help you out even more. So down in the description below, I will include a link to my free guide titled Level Up Your Wedding Films. This guide is gonna show you some of the most important things that took me years to learn as a wedding filmmaker, and they're gonna be super helpful to you as you grow and improve your business. And like I said, the guide is totally free. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.